Good morning, beloved. This is the Remnant Seed Bible Study Channel. Today's subject is the flood of lies. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is based on Mark 13, Luke 21, and Matthew 24, which are a step-by-step -step outline of events leading up to the second coming of Christ. Jesus said it would be just like the days of Noah before the flood. If you want to examine what happened before the flood, you'd go to Genesis chapter 6. Mankind had polluted himself with the DNA of fallen angels, and God had no choice but to destroy all of them except for Noah, his family, and the two of every flesh he took with him aboard the ark. In Genesis 6, 5, God said, The heart of mankind is on evil continuously, and he also said that it had grieved him to have made mankind flesh. When Christ said in Matthew 24 they were giving and taking marriage, he was referring to what was happening during the days of Noah, and they were marrying fallen angels and then having Geber, uh, babies who were a mix of mankind and fallen angels. Uh, these uh, these um, freaks, uh, some of them had uh, six toes and six fingers, and they were an abomination to God. They, were, they went totally against the plan of God, and that's why he caused the flood. It was to destroy all of them, because basically mankind had polluted himself with this fallen seed and these fallen angels called Nephilim. So let's move on. Um, have you ever heard uh, your fluffball pastor teach you this? I don't think you have. They, they stay away from controversial subjects like this because it's too graphic. Uh, and if he did, most of the congregation would walk out and think he was crazy. But this is literally what Jesus himself was referring to in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. According to the Bible, Jesus said, Just before I come back in my second coming, it will be just like the days of Noah, or Noe in the Greek. The heart of mankind is on evil continuously, and instead of a flood of water, it has now become a flood of lies in the end times. And oh boy, just look around you. I mean, everything you see is... is is a lie. I mean, people are so deceived right now. Revelation 12, 7 speaks of these same fallen angels and also Satan being cast down to the earth in the end times. If, if this event were to happen today, I believe many would think these fallen angels uh, were aliens and that the Antichrist would be Jesus Christ. In essence, they are taken away by the flood of lies they have been told by their leaders who knowingly or unknowingly are being used by Satan to spread this flood of lies. And mainly, I call it the rapture doctrine. It's the biggest false doctrine uh, that the Christian church has ever embraced. And it just came, in, came into play in the last 200 years. It started off with little old Mar Margaret MacDonald. John Darby and, and Mr. Irving, they, uh, they, they carried this doctrine forward. Most of the general public um, is unaware of the mystery of iniquity. This mystery of iniquity lies behind the scenes, and it's been in play since the beginning of mankind. These, these people who are involved in this mystery of iniquity know exactly who they are. Uh, you know, and you, you can see them uh, using all of the major, the politicians uh, in the world today are just a bunch of puppets. And these people behind the scenes are the ones who really control things. In other words, they're unaware of the evil that exists behind the scenes of life. They're just completely blind to it. The end times are here on the scale of deception is worldwide. 
Many have a false version of reality in modern times and they are literally being swept away by this flood of lies, just as the people uh, in Noah's time were swept away by a flood of water. These people are being swept away by a flood of lies. This is a metaphor. Many people are under strong delusion and unable to see the truth, and you can see it in their eyes. Just go to an airport, go to the mall. I mean, these people walk around and they, they act like they're in a perpetual stupor. Many have eyes but can't see and ears but they can't hear, and this goes for Christians and the heathen alike. Much of modern Christianity is false, and most of the, what non-Christians believe to be reality is completely false also. Just turn on your TV or go to the net, and most of what you are given about current news and events is a lie. Uh, the version of Christianity you now see in modern times is false as well. The deception is almost complete. Everybody uh, at the time thought Noah was a nutcase, but in reality... He was the only one with any sanity. Think about that. And I get this from my family. I get this from fellow Christians. I mean, they are so deceived with this rapture doctrine. And it, it's been perpetuated. I mean, and it's like 95% of the church believes in this nonsense. And below is an example of the deception and ineptitude of the modern day church when it comes to the simple task of reading uh, use, and using the basic methods learned in, in, in the second grade. Notice these three words, took, taken, and taken in the verses below, okay? Um, Matthew 24, 38, for as in the days of, of uh, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. This is talking about the fallen angels and women were marrying the Nephilim and having Geber. These were these were hybrids, okay? These weren't human beings. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, that's the Greek for Noah, uh, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the uh, coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, and one shall be taken, and the other left. In the context of the end times and the events that lead up to the end, the subject is not to fall into deception and be deceived by the flood of lies. Jesus uses the words deceive and deception many, many times when he explains to the disciples, uh, you know, the events that lead up to the second coming. And this is the main theme of Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. The first word in my example is took. They were taken by the flood by surprise because they didn't know they were deceived. I mean, if you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. That's the key. Satan, that's the key to Satan coming as a thief in the night. Um, Christians who are deceived will not expect him, okay, they're, because they're deceived. There can't be any mistake here as to what was taken and by what it was taken by. They were taken by the flood, and the ones spoken of here are the deceived people of the world. The next two examples Jesus gives us are the ones taken and the ones left. The first example of the word took is the clue as to who was taken, and when, why, and how they were taken. If you are taken away in a flood, your pro prognosis is not good. And that is, is what is being said here. I mean, if you're in a flood, you're swimming in the water for, what well, is almost, you know, five months, you're, you're going to drown, okay? There ain't no way around that. The people taken away in the flood were destroyed because they did not believe Noah and God who were telling them to repent or be destroyed in a great flood. And God gave them plenty of warning time and time again. If the people in the days of Noah knew the great flood was coming, they would have stopped what they were doing, but they didn't because they were deceived. They, they believed a lie. They didn't think there was a flood was coming. They thought Noah was a nut, okay? As a result, they were literally swept away. Jesus could not have made this any clearer, beloved. 
Now that you have the right view of the scenario in front of you, I'll give you the interpretation of the modern day church by using balsa wood for a buttress. Imagine that. They use these verses to back up a false rapture flyaway scenario. They claim that the ones taken um, here are actually uh, the ones taken in rapture. <laughs> I just got to laugh at that, beloved. The word taken does not mean flying. It means taken away in a flood and drowned. A, a rapture of the deep, if you will, okay? And that, that was you know, one of the original uh, meanings of the word rapture. When you came up too fast, you got these uh, bubbles in your blood and it would kill you or it would leave you like uh, higher than a kite. I mean, that's what the original meaning of the rapture uh, is. It's a feeling of euphoria or, you know, living in a false reality. The ones left are the ones safely aboard the ark of Jesus Christ and remain working in the fields ripe for harvest. They are not deceived and never will be. Your sheep know his voice and they will follow him. Do not be deceived, beloved. This is just one example of the false church and how they blatantly change the word of God to promote their own agenda. What is sad is, is this is so elementary, and most Christians do not see it because they are Bible illiterate. Now I want to I want to go I want to take you on another look at this, um, the same subject, approach it from a different point of view. Okay, Matthew twenty four thirty six. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. As, as time draws nearer to the season, the day and the hour will be known. But the, no man knows it now until some of these events uh, come to pass, and then we can put it together. Um, now, God will reveal this. He hasn't done anything that he hasn't revealed it to his prophets first, okay? Um, and they will warn you. They will warn you. I will warn you, beloved, but as the days of knowing were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah built an ark to safety as the Lord warned him before the flood came. So have the prophets of the Lord tried to warn the people of today. The ark was built to survive the flood that was designed to destroy all of the hybrids from the union between the women of the earth and the fallen angels, Nephilim of the days of Noah. For as the days that were before the flood, they came eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah that entered into the ark. So this is going to be a total surprise to some people, beloved. Um, it's really sad. They just will not heed. They will not listen. No matter what you do, I have experienced this on a personal level, beloved. Women were marrying these angelic beings back in Noah's time. And so shall it be again in the last days of this earth age also. There won't be any births from these unions, though, because this, this uh, deception uh, will last. The deception itself has already begun, but when Antichrist comes into the earth, it's not going to last long enough for these babies to be born. Um, these unholy, there, there won't be any births from these unholy unions because the reign of Antichrist will only last five months. And his, his fallen angels are coming with him again. They're going to be doing the same thing. And I actually believe this five months, if it weren't even, if it weren't shortened to two and a half months. Now, this is talking about the, the, the jure appearance of Antichrist. Now, the deception and the New World Order and the leading up to the two and a half months will be, uh, t you know, uh, two and a half months. It's symbolic of a, of a period of time, just like the, the 70 weeks of Daniel were never a literal 70 weeks. The last seven years, seven is the number of completeness and it's a number that, that God, only really only God knows, and we will know it when it comes upon us. So the, the, we're in the 69th week, and you, you can't believe that the 69 weeks were literal, just as you, can't not, you cannot believe that the last seven years are, are literal. 
when the number seven is used, it's always symbolic of a perfect period of time and divine completeness or perfection. So really only God truly knows how long this period is going to be. All we can do is try to, to make sense of what we have read in the Bible. Um, now notice the words took them away. I'm going to go over this again. These words are the keys to understand who's taken and who's left. The people taken away are taken in the flood, and the ones left are safely aboard the ark, okay? They know who this joker antichrist is. They're, they will escape the flood of lies that comes out of his mouth. He's going to claim to be God. He's going to stand in a holy place. Now, the ark is symbolic for Christ. If you are on board with him, you'll escape the coming flood of lies and deception of the Antichrist who appears on a white horse claiming to be Jesus at the sixth trump is found in Revelation 6, 2. And I saw and behold a white horse. He that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given him, unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now if you look at this word bow in the Greek, it means uh, talks on. It's a cheap fabric imitation. Now, how many of these fake rainbows have you seen lately on cheap fabric imitation? The standards uh, for this community of people, and I won't even say it because I'll get taken down from YouTube. And a crown was given him, unto him. And if you look at this crown, this word crown, it's another interesting word. Stephos. It's a tightly woven chalet uh, or a turban. <laughs> now the ones taken away are not raptured, but they are taken away by a flood of lies and they are deceived by the Antichrist and end up worship, worshiping him as God. They are marked with the mark of the beast. Uh, beloved, um, this mark is not a tattoo. It's not... Um, you know, it's not a barcode. It's not anything other than your allegiance to Christ. And, or, and if you're deceived by the false Christ, it's, it's your allegiance to him. The mark of the beast is the mark that you receive when you worship this false Messiah. It's, it's all a metaphor. Um, it's what's in your brain. It's not what's stamped on the outside of it. And, and also your hand, your right hand is a metaphor for the work that you do. Who are you working for? Are you giving suck to the works of darkness and false doctrine in the world today? That's what that term means, giving suck. You're nursing along this false doctrine called the pre-tribulation rapture. Now let's continue. We're almost done here, beloved. Now, Once taken away, again, they're taken away in this flood of lies. And I'll explain this flood of lies in Revelation 9 in a second. One is left, the one remaining in the field, working for the final harvest. The two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. The same goes for this verse as well. The ones working in the field are working for God. They know the truth. They're spreading it. They're, they're involved in the end times harvest instead of wanting to fly away in this false doctrine. Uh, it, the ones working in the field are working for God. You just have to, you have to realize that, beloved. You can't switch this around, which is exactly what these false teachers do. It's sad that most of mainstream uh, church believes the one taken or taken by Jesus in a pre-tribulation rapture, and the ones left are going through the wrath of God as they're left behind. This is such nonsense, Okay. This is a complete contortion of the Word of God. How do they get this so wrong? How do you switch this around? I mean, that, is, that has to be strong delusion, beloved. And God has sent it to them because of what they, they'd rather have their ears tickled with false doctrine. They have been sent strong delusion by God. If they want to have their ears tickled, God will send them strong delusion, as 2 Thessalonians 2 explains. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth and have pleasure in unrighteousness. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come 
except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There's only one son of perdition, beloved, and that is Satan the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember not when I was with you, I told you these things, Okay, now this mystery of iniquity, I won't go over these. It, we, we know what it is. It's, the, it's the, the illusion that everything's all right in the world. When, and in reality, this mystery of iniquity has existed since the beginning of mankind. And it will always exist. Now, I want to go over Revelation 9.1 and explain this flood of lies, this metaphor. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key uh, of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Now this smoke is symbolic for lies, okay? The smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. This flood of lies is so thick right now. I mean, the world is so full of deception. Everything is deception that you see now, okay? And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And then, you know, this explains that this is going to last five months. This is where they get the five months from. But there were, and 2 Peter 2, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall be in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. When the Lord comes back, these, these are the same people that are going to pray for the mountains to fall on them. They've been deceived, and they help to deceive the multitudes as well. They help them to take the mark of the beast. When they realize this, they're going to pray for the mountains to fall on them. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. When you talk about the truth to these people, they make fun of you. I get this all the time. I, I mean, the Lord, and every time this happens, the Lord just puts his arm around me and says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You're right over the target when they make fun of you. That's exactly what they do, and they cannot, they, they can't, they, they can't debunk anything you say, so they attack your character, and they do it every time. I've experienced this with PhDs, DDs, and BSs, and everything under the sun. I mean, it's unbelievable what these people will call you. You know, Revelation 19.20 and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both are cast alive into the lake of fire and brimstone. Um, this, this beast is the beast system and the beast, okay, which is none other than Satan and the false prophet. They're all the same entity. They're all going to be cast into this torment, this lake of fire for, for eternity at the, end of the, at the end of the millennium. But at the beginning of the millennium, they will be cast into outer darkness and held, for, held in chains. Uh, uh, throughout the millennium, they'll be released. Satan will be released once again at the end of the millennium. And don't lose sight of that. Don't confuse, uh, you know, the, the, two, the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. Now, let's move. We're almost uh, at the end of this. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter time some shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Um, this is this is what we see today, beloved. <clears throat> the church is full of false teachers. Seventy-one percent of the church is false, and even even the rest of the church, the twenty-nine percent, a lot of what they teach is false. But they have enough of it right to still uh, remain 
in good standing with Christ, even though they're teaching a lot of lies and false doctrine. But there's 71 percent of the church is found, in, you know, in Revelation, uh, the, the address to the seven churches. There were only two that Christ found no fault with. Are you in the church of Smyrna or Philadelphia? If you're not, you're in a false church, beloved. That's that's it's plain. It's in a, the the uh, address to the seven churches is an example for all times. Which one? Which church are you in, beloved? That's the end of this lecture. I hope your day is going smooth and much love to you. And we'll talk to you on the next video.